Hi, this is Tim Campbell with Action Coach of Indiana with our Business Spotlight series. And the purpose is to interview local businesses and promote them through our social channels and email database. This is a free service we're doing because when every small business is strong, then the economy is strong. And today I have the pleasure of speaking with Angie. Welcome, Angie. It's great to have you on the show today. It's great to be here, Tim. Thank you for the invitation. Absolutely. So let's start with having you, um, before we get into the business, tell us a little bit about yourself. Introduce yourself and, and give us a bit of your background. Great. Well, personally, uh, my husband and I live with our children in a small town on the southeast side of Indianapolis called New Palestine. We've, I've lived in Indiana my entire life. Uh, but professionally, I am the president of Strive HR. It's a consulting firm that I started while we help organizations who are aspiring for an award-winning workplace distinction. Fantastic. So tell us a little bit more about your business. I like to ask folks if you had a 60 second commercial, what would that sound like? Yeah, well, as I mentioned, we help organizations that are going through an award winning workplace distinction. So to kind of break that down, it's the journey through that process. So when I'm talking with an organization that may want to achieve an award like best places to work in Indiana or top workplaces in Indianapolis. Those are two very prominent awards here in the local area. And I'm, I'm their, their guide through that journey and through that process. So some organizations may want me to work alongside with them and some may want me to focus more on the strategy and guide them through that process, but handle a lot of that process for them. So whatever works out best for that client, that's, that's what I offer. And I also learned during the pandemic, I had some great conversations with some wonderful HR professionals, but I found that a lot of HR professionals were, were feeling a bit overwhelmed. Not only did they have a full plate pre-COVID, but when COVID started, they had, they had a lot more duties that they were responsible for as well. So I felt a calling to take my 25 years of corporate HR experience and I launched a mentor program to work one-on-one -on -one with HR professionals who are looking to learn more about how they can make a better impact within their organization. Oh, fantastic. So the getting those awards, it's not as simple as somebody might think, right? There's a whole bunch of criteria and things that have to be proven and demonstrated. So you help companies to navigate that world. Is that correct? That is correct. And uh, one of the first things we talk about is their why. Why do they even want to do it? And, I, and I'm very open with clients. If, if they're looking just to get a logo put on their website that they earned that award, or if they just want to get a trophy on the shelf, it's very important to me to explain that it's more about the journey and the process and the attributes that they're going to gain by having those important conversations with their employees and learning more about those wants and needs. And that's what we really focus on. And if you get the award, that's great. And let's take time to celebrate that. But it is really more about the journey. Oh, that's a fantastic perspective. So tell us again, how long have you had your business? I started my business in 2019 after a 25-ish year experience um, in corporate HR. Fantastic. So a a wealth of knowledge from all those different experiences that you bring to the table. Absolutely. So tell us more specifically, who do you serve or who's your, your ideal client or what we call your target audience? Well, uh, I'll answer that in a few different ways. So my ideal client is one who focuses on or shares my focus on continuous improvement. And that's something that's really important to me, whether I was in the HR seat or whether I'm working with a client on award-winning workplace distinction or working with an HR professional on growing their impact. It's very important to learn where we are and where we wanna go and how we can get better during that process. So if a client wants to get an award but really doesn't want to focus on the improvement that's associated with that, that, that is a bit of a struggle. So it's, it's really that, that client for me that's ideal is the one that says, yes, we wanna get better. Yes, we want to make an improvement. We want to learn. We want to act based on what feedback our employees have given us. So that's one answer to that question. But the other is I, I find myself often working with clients that are in that small to medium size organization, that 25, 250 to 300 employees or less. Often when you get to a larger organization, they, they have a lot of individuals already dedicated to that process where I feel I can make a bigger impact with the smaller organizations. And my background is, is very strong in tech and financial services and manufacturing. 
I understand their lingo. I understand what's important to them and, and process improvement and how HR can make a really strong impact with that. So I feel I can communicate in the language in which is shared between the both of us. Isn't it interesting when you go to a business and they have all these acronyms and, and you've got to get the dictionary or the translator out of what do all those acronyms mean? <laughs> exactly. Well, and words specific to the industry. I mean, my background started with the staffing industry. Mm. And so I had hundreds of clients and I, I just took all of those as learning opportunities for myself. And uh, one client in particular that I worked with very closely for about two years was at that time, they were going through their ISO and QS certification process. So there was a lot of discussion around Kaizen and that continuous improvement process. So very early on in my career, that was embedded into me how important that was regardless of what area within the organization that you were working within. But I also learned the importance of bringing that into the organizational leadership side, as well as into the HR seat and the importance that those have. And clearly it had a big impact on me because I elected to name the company Strive HR because we're always striving for improvement. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so Angie, tell us what's been the greatest impact that COVID has had on your business? Oh gosh, well, I, I mean, I'm, I, I faced what a lot of other people did as far as slowdown. Um, and so that really gave me an opportunity to take a step back and focus on networking and connections. And, and I've always enjoyed networking and getting to know people, but I've had such a wonderful opportunity to meet people that I probably never would have met mm -hmm if COVID had not have occurred. So I guess trying to find the bright side of, of what we can glean from that. But I, I immersed myself into networking conversations online and elected to join groups where um, entrepreneurs and solopreneurs could learn from each other. So other people that were maybe even outside of my industry, I mean, when we're a solopreneur, we wear a lot of different hats. Right. And so I took that time to educate myself I, I'm not an expert on all of those things, but if I can learn who my resources are, then when I need help with something, I know who those go-tos are. Um, and it gave me a chance to really develop some of those relationships and learn um, how, how I can improve myself by spending time with those individuals. Fantastic. So um, similar in, in, to that vein is we've all had to pivot during the past year to, to figure out ways to make our business still work uh, during the, the, the pandemic. So what's one thing that you had to do differently in order to, to pivot your business and, and how has that been working for you? Uh, well, I, I will say I've, I've learned to slow down. And I mean, we were all forced somewhat to slow down, but previously I was very quick to react and quick to make a decision because if my clients needed something, I wanted to be right there. Um, but it really gave me an opportunity when you have those quiet days and those quiet moments to take a step back, reevaluate your processes and make sure that you have everything lined up in a way that's going to best serve your clients and best serve yourself when things do pick back up. So I did take some time to take a look at systems that I have into place, um, focus on my education, my certifications, took advantage of this time to to really hone in on those and make sure I have all of my research credits lined up. But it, it was really a lot of that taking time to pause and learn and, and live through that experience and become better because of that. Wonderful. So thank you for sharing that. Angie, here's an interesting question. It's been said that smart people learn from their mistakes and wise people learn from the mistakes of others. So what's a mistake you've made along the way that you'd be willing to share so that other entrepreneurs can learn from your experience? Well, um, staying the course. Hmm. That, that was one thing. It, when, I, when I went out on, on my own, um, I found that there were a lot of HR consultants in Indianapolis. And it's, it's, it's great that we have this wealth of knowledge and this wealth of talent very close together. So I really had to take a step back and say, yes, I'm a consultant. And yes, I'm a consultant in an HR capacity. But what sets me different apart from everyone else? And how can I best use my talents to serve others with that? So I've, I've been fortunate in my career to work for organizations that culture and employee engagement were of top most concern. And it was at all levels of the organization. And as a result, I had great experiences with going through the process of becoming a best place to work 
and a top workplace. So I, I really took some time back and, I, and I, I actually hired a business coach and said, you know, I know these are my talents and I know these are the needs, but I was really struggling with making that connection of how do I set myself apart with a really strong focus on corporate culture and engagement. And um, that's where the, the thought process came behind helping organizations go through that award winning workplace distinction. I've earned a lot of those and been a part of earning a lot of those. And I've loved how every part of that circles back to culture engagement. So learning that I may have labeled myself in one area didn't, didn't serve me to the best purpose. But when I took a step back and really narrowed it down, and did I lose some potential business opportunities a part of that process? Yes, I did. I did turn some down because they really weren't on the focus of where I can best utilize my skills. And um, now because I've done that, I feel it was definitely the best choice. Seemed like a mistake at the beginning, but now I really think it was the best thing for me to do. <laughs> That's fantastic. That that having that unique selling proposition is so key because, it, right, if if we can't articulate what we're doing, then we can't expect our, our potential clients to understand what we do. Right. right. And that that term of being all things to all people, right, means we're we're not nothing to anybody is is so true in 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 a, such a competitive world. So I'm so happy to hear that you were able to to niche in and figure out exactly what you're going to stand for and how you're going to provide a, a meaningful difference in the marketplace. Congratulations for going Thank through you. that exercise. Thank you. So Angie, what do you feel is the biggest challenge that your business is going to face um, over the next 12 months? Um, I think that organizations are really focusing now on just bringing everyone back together. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it's an education. It's making sure that we are continuously providing to organizations the necessity to listen to our employees because they're really telling us important information that we need going forward. So that, that's, that's an area in which I'm really gonna focus on, hopefully adding value to my clients, which is really going to be educating them on the benefits of going through a process like this. And, and how, as we go through this, we, we think we know everything that our employees need when they come in the front door. I mean, that's the honeymoon time and everything's going great, but it's important to listen to them through the duration of that employee life cycle. And they're gonna ebb and flow and grow and develop and you as an organization need to replicate that mm -hmm. based on where your business is going, the needs of your customers, based on where your employees are going, the needs of your employees and continuously evolving through that process. Fantastic, thank you so much for that insight. So Angie, second last question here. Um, we will have your contact information to share along with this video so that folks can reach out to you. Is there anything else that you want to make sure that we cover today or, or what's the best way for folks to learn more about whether you're the right fit for them? Well, LinkedIn is a great way to get connected uh, with me. So I, I'm, I'm very visible on LinkedIn, at least I try to be. Uh, so I'm, I'm on there daily. Uh, strivehr.net is the website. There is a contact page on there, but I would also like to mention if there's any HR professionals listening. I created a document that it's the, the mindsets for emerging HR professionals and things that they need to be thinking about. So just thinking like your CEO, making decisions that, that would be very important to that individual as well. So that's, that's available for free to anybody who would have an interest about that on the website. Um, but I'm also offering, if someone would like to learn more about if going through the award-winning workplace distinction is something that would be of interest to them, or if it's an HR professional that thinks, I wanna learn more about how I can make a better impact within my organization. If they would just like to mention your show and that they, they, they listen to this, I'm offering a, three, a free 30 minute consult conversation and we'll just talk and see if they're ready and if that's something that, that they would like to do. Fantastic, awesome. Thank you so much for that offer. So last question here, Angie, tell me what's been most inspiring to you over the craziness of the past year? Oh gosh, well, I'll, I'll circle back to those networking conversations. Uh, it, it has been amazing to me, the small business owners that want to help each other out. Mm -hmm. And and we're all, it's a great community. Indianapolis and, and, and Indiana as a whole, it's a great community for helping businesses grow and develop. Mm -hmm. And the opportunity to work with another organization or another entrepreneur that says, I hear you and I see what you're doing and I want to help you. 
it's it's so humbling the number of people who want to take time out of their day to help others that are growing and developing in their business. And I think as long as, as a community, we all continue to do that with one another, as a community as a whole, we're definitely gonna benefit from that. Oh, wonderful, thank you for for that insight and and for uh, sharing your your mistake earlier and, and just for your heart for helping others. Uh, that does conclude our interview. For those listening, if you've heard something that's piqued your interest, uh, please take advantage of Angie's offer to have that 30 minute uh, free consultation. Um, if you are a HR professional, uh, please go to her website and download that free document. Um, and if you just if you have any questions on anything that we've covered today, I know that uh, Angie would be more than happy to 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 give you gift you some of her time to to talk through that. So please uh, reach out to her. Use the contact information that will be provided along with this uh, video. Um, as a thank you for everyone that appears on the show. Uh, we do provide a complimentary coaching session. So Angie, we'll talk about that uh, offline here. It's been a, a pleasure learning about you today, Angie, and about your company. And I wish you tremendous success. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You too.